Hey everyone, here's our math problem for today. What is the i-th root of negative 1? Before we solve this, let's recall that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. But what we have here is the i-th root of negative 1. In other words, i is the index of this radical, and the radicand is negative 1. So, in order to solve this, we need to recall our concept of complex numbers. So, let's draw a complex plane. In the complex plane, this is our real part, and this is our imaginary axis. Let's say we have a point z. In the complex rectangular plane, this is expressed as a plus bi, where a is the real part, this is a, and this b is in the imaginary axis here. However, this point c can also be described by taking this line, which is the radius, and the angle it formed with the positive real axis. And this point C in polar coordinate is equal to the radius times E raised to I times the angle theta. This angle is this angle here. Another name for this angle is this is the argument, and this R is the modulus, and this radius is always positive. Now, where is this negative 1? This negative 1 is somewhere here, and to describe this point, we need a radius. So its radius is equal to 1, we are after the absolute value of this distance. And what's the angle? From this point, going to this line, that is one half the circumference of a circle. And the circumference of a unit circle is 2 pi, and so 1 half is equal to pi. So therefore, the angle of this point is pi. And substituting now these values to this polar equation, we now have negative 1, which is our z, equals r. Our r is 1. So we copy e i times the angle is pi. Now, notice now that to arrive at this point, I rotated pi. But if I rotate another 2 pi, I will end up at the same point, and every time I rotate 2 pi, I will keep arriving at the same point. In other words, if I add multiples of 2 pi, the way to write multiples of 2 pi is you multiply it by a certain integer n. So here, n is an element of the set of integers. If I multiply 2 pi by n, I am getting multiples of pi, where n is an element of the set of integers. So this angle now here is now this entire angle here. This is still in the form r, where our r is 1, times e i times the angle theta. And that is equal to this point, negative 1. So, this is now the value of this negative 1, which is inside this radical symbol, and therefore, we can now write this to be equal to i, and inside the radicand is e i times the quantity pi plus 2n pi where n is an element of the set of integers. This is equal to the base raised to the fractional exponent 1 over i. So we now write this as e times i times the angle pi plus 2n pi all raised to the fractional exponent 1 over i. By the power of a power log exponent, we can multiply this inside exponent times the outside exponent here, so we will end up at e, this i and this 1 over i are cancelled out, so we have pi plus 2n pi, where n is an element of the set of integers. So, you can take any values for n. That means our given equation now is equal to that. So, if n equals 0, what is the value of this? This becomes 0. So what we have is e 
to the pi. Now, if n equals 1, then this becomes e raised to, this becomes 2 times 1 is 2 times pi is 2 pi plus pi, that is e raised to 3 pi. And if you keep substituting integers to n, you notice that some of the values are e to the pi, e to the 3 pi, e to the 5 pi. On the other hand, if we substitute negative 1 here, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 times pi is negative 2 pi, plus 1 pi is negative pi, and so on and so forth. So there are so many possible values that can satisfy this equation. But this part here, e to the pi, is called as the principal value. So this is now our solution to this problem. So thank you very much, and we hope to see you again in our next video. Bye for now.